Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In the previous tutorials for this Jail series, we've worked on a bunch of different stuff from teleporting the player into it, adding transitions, adding first person mode, to teleporting NPCs in. So in this next version, what we're going to do is we're going to actually start working on the actual mini games that handle the player escaping. This is going to add a lot more variety to the game, so instead of just having to wait for the same repetitive action all the time, we can add a bunch of different mini games games that randomize each time you go to a jail cell which is how you escape it could be that you could simply have to lock pick it it could be the jail cells already open it could be you have to pick up the guard there's so much we could do so let's get started so we need it to be in a generic way no, where no matter which jail cell it goes to, it can set it up for how it needs to work. So this could be it attaches a key to the guard. It gives the guard dialogue where he can be bribed. It could be it adds a, a trap door to the floor that you have to lockpick. There's loads of different ways we can do it. And we've got to try and come up with a simple way to make this generically work. So the first thing I'm going to do is thinking about if we just go for the guard with the key, we need to be able to get this jail cell, which we can run it on it. Then we need to get which jail or prison it belongs to. So that'd be this building. And then from the building, we can then relate it to the guards on patrol and give one of them a key. That'll be how we'll approach that one. For the door just being open, open we just need to simply get the jail cell and we can do that that's easy enough so what i'm roughly building up is we're going to have a blueprint along the lines of jail escapes or jail escape technique and it'll have functions on it which will be given the current jail and the current jail cell so you can go off and get the guard or do something you need and then from there we'll just create childs of this blueprint which will spawn a trap door unlock the door stuff like that so where do we start i'm going to come into my blueprints folder i'm going to come into jail cells and i'm going to right click and create a new folder called escape techniques and i'm going to open it up and i'm going to create the first blueprint class so i'm going to right click blueprint class and i'll set it to a type of and i'll call it bp jail escape underscore and i'll call it the version what we're going to do so i'll do a dead basic one left unlocked super super easy one and i'll open this up so we need a way to call as many of these blueprints to all have the same functions so we could go down the abstract route but then that means we'd have to cast to it at some point and we don't want to do that because it'll hold it in memory so instead i'm going to create another interface i'm going to come to my interfaces folder jail cells and i'll right click blueprint blueprint interface and i'll call it bpi underscore jail escape and i'll open it up the function i will call setup escape door door stuff like that and then i will add an input of it and the input i will set it to jail cell and i'll set it to a type of bpi jail cell and that's pretty much all this one needs so we can hit compile and save so if we go back to the jail escape door left unlocked and we implement this interface bpi jail escape go back to the event graph we can delete these off and you'll see we have the setup escape interface we can just double click so this is where we actually get the jail and we do whatever we need to do so what is it we need to do well we need to unlock so do we have anything currently that allows us to forcefully unlock the jail? So let's open it up and have a look. We have nothing that actually sets the unlocked status of the jail. And that's going to be something we'll need later. I'm going to come back to my interfaces. And I'm going to open up my jail cell interface. And we've got no interfaces that unlocks the door. And I'm going to just add a function called set status have an input of a boolean called unlocked so what we can use for this is if we want to lock a jail for some reason we can just call this interface later i'm going to come back to my bp jail cell and i will double click my interface i will open up my interface default and i will double click set unlock status which this is simply going to grab the jail is unlocked and set it like so that's all it needs to do so in theory on our first escape technique here all we have to do off of this setup escape for the door left unlocked is called set unlock status and tick it to unlock like so that's all we need to do so how do we actually go about starting to randomly apply these so i don't want to hold all of these in memory nor do we want to keep all of the interfaces in memory either that seems quite inefficient even if we soft reference them it's going to be active for every single jail in here which we don't want so instead i'm going to come and create a data table so i'm going to come into my structs folder first before because to create a data table you need to tell it what each individual row inside the table is and we do that by creating a 
struct. I'm going to right click and create a new folder in here called jail cells just so it's all neatly organized. I'm going to come into blueprint structure and I'm going to call it s underscore jail cell escape and I'll open it up. So realistically all we really need inside the structure tab is the jail cell escape. So I'll just add a new variable of escape technique and I'll set the type to be a type of actor because that's all we need to do to spawn it and I'm going to use a soft class reference and the reason we're using a type of actor is when we actually want to use this all we need to do is spawn this actor call setup escape then destroy it and it will just be a type of actor which has our interface on it so it should be fine the only way this won't work is if your actor doesn't inherit from bpi jail escape that's the only way we can't spawn an interface which is why we can't use the interface and then the soft class is just so this data table doesn't load it in memory until you specifically pick which row you want to use so now with that i'm going to come back to my data tables folder i'm going to right click folder and choose new folder and call, call it jail cells inside here i will right click miscellaneous data table and i will set the row structure to our s jail cell escape and click ok i will call it dt underscore jail escapes and open it up. all we have to do is click add at the top and then we can start adding our technique so the first one we're going to add is going to be our bp jail escape door left on what like so and then we can just add as many as we need down here but we'll start off with the basic one so now that we've set up our data table we actually need a way to say only if the player gets sent to jail should we be spawning techniques if the npc gets sent there we don't want to do it now luckily we have something on our player already where we do specific player stuff for the jail if i come and find the player we added the events here when they're sent to jail it goes off and does this stuff now i don't really feel nice about putting the escape spawning stuff on the player it seems like it shouldn't belong to there because it's controlled by the jail and instead i'm going to come to the bpi jail cell i'm going to create a new function called add escape technique and i'm going to hit compile and save and that's all it's going to do and then back on my player just before we fade in what i'm actually going to do is drag off of our target here and i'm just going to call add escape technique here so if it is spawning a trap door or it's unlocking the jet door by default for example then we don't need to worry about anything being spawned because the player won't see it because they're blacked out like that which will be perfect and now we can hit compile and save and then back on our bp jail cell we can now implement the interface add escape technique by double clicking it and i'm and then in here what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag off and you get data table row names to get all the row names inside our dt jail escapes and then from here we want to get a random one because then that's how we pick a random row from the data table so i'll just type random array item like so and then dragging off the data table i will do get data table row just the singular one and then we can pass in the row name and the data table is our data table here like so then you'll see if we drag off of here and do break we will now get the escape technique which is perfect so what do we do we need to drag off of this and do async load class asset and we'll plug it into the row found there once it's completed we then can go ahead and spawn the actor from class and for the class we will just plug in the escape technique like that don't drag in the class there because otherwise it won't let you do it look you'll have to cast this to an actor it's much better to just resolve the reference here so what we're doing is at this point here we've got a soft reference but we don't actually have the actor's class yet we then async load it and say load the reference and only once it's loaded it then we resolve it and say okay now treat this like a class and get it which is perfect the collision handling override will just do always spawn because there's no collisions on it anyway the spawn transform i'll just set it to get actor location so it's at least spawned in the vicinity of the jail cell and then from here we will drag off and we will call set up escape on our bp jail escape which is what we've spawned the jail cell will be simply self so it knows what it's referencing and then the only other thing we need to do now is actually clear up the escape so once it's spawned and it sets the escape up we need to get rid of it so what i'm going to do is just come back over to the bp escape here and after this simply call destroy actor just to get rid of it because we don't need it anymore and with that ladies and gentlemen we should be there so if i come back up to my debug key here i'm actually going to come and delete most of this debug code here so all we're doing is getting a random cell and calling random then i'm going to drag off and do add character to jail just like we did to send the player to jail which is what we want and then on character i will drag off and do self and now we hit compile and save so in theory when we press p it should get a random cell and add the player to it when it adds the player to the jail cell it should come and get the player add it to the list of characters in the cell then call send to jail on the player which will come to the player here and call send to jail where it'll fade the camera out once it's finished fading it out it'll spawn the player set first person mode add the escape technique but only for the player and then start the camera fade back in and the escape technique should go back to the jail cell where it finds a random technique and then applies it which in this case will be the set the gate unlocked so let's go back to landscape and we'll click play so by
by default, all these jail cells are currently locked. They're set unlocked to false. So if we press the F8 key and just verify this, so we can come to a bunch of jail cells, you can see is unlocked is false. And if we go up and down all of these, they're all locked. We can't get in or out of them. So if we press the P key, we've been transported to jail. Perfect. And you can see we're inside this jail here. If I press the F8 key now and have another look at this jail here, you can see it's set to unlocked true, meaning the escape technique's already taken place. We don't currently have any way to interact with the jail cell, so we can't actually get out at the moment. So there is the first escape technique that we've done, that the jail is automatically set to unlocked. Now, depending on how many escape techniques you want, entirely depends on how you create your game. If you want a patrolling guard to have a key, then we need to create the patrolling guard effect. And likewise, if you want trap doors, then you need to spawn a bigger jail cell and spawn a trap door. So now that we've got our door here, we actually need a way to open the door so we can actually test if it works. So we need to start looking at adding interaction to our jail cells. So this entirely depends on how you've set your interaction. If you've watched my starter tutorial, you have a box trace interaction, which will work fine. If you've got the narrative interaction plugins, which is what I'll be using, that will also work fine, but it'll just differ how you create it. And if you've created your own or you've got another plugin, all we need to do is tell the door when the player tries to unlock it, is it unlocked? Or is it already open? If it is open, close it. If it's not open, is it unlocked? Open it. That simple. And then you can further expand upon this and add lock picking if you've got a type of game like that and stuff like that but we're going to go super basic for now so depending how complicated you want your door opening to work if you want it super realistic where you must point at the door and click the door to open it then what i suggest you do is take the cell door into a blueprint of its own and create it as a blueprint component however for me i'm going to make it a bit more basic like skyrim where you can click on anywhere of the cell and it will just open the door like the entire cell cage is interactable so what we need to do is have a way where we can tell bp jail cell try to open the door so for me using narrative interaction, I need to create an interaction component. I'm going to come down to my narrative interactions folder and I'm going to right click blueprint class and I'll search for narrative interactable component and I'll do select and I will call it interactable underscore jail door and I'll open this up. So I'm going to get rid of these two starting events and I'm going to add a function of can interact. I'm going to delete this off. So the way it works for me and if you've got a good interaction system, it will have a similar function to tell you whether you can interact with something is you need to return turn true if you're allowed to interact with it otherwise false is why you can't interact with it so in my case this component will be added to the actual jail so i can simply do get owner like so and then from here i can call all the relevant interface functions which is the benefit of us using an interface we don't need tasks so the first thing i'm going to do is check is the door already open in the jail cell if it is already open then we need to actually call close i'm going to promote the owner to a local variable to make it easier called jail cell i'll just put this back here because we're going to be referencing this quite a lot and i don't want to drag it everywhere like so a little bit neater but we're going to check first if the jail cell is open if it is open then it means we just need to close it so that's what the can interact's going to do so i'm just going to simply tick true and connect it up like that if you've got a broken functionality then add it in here as well but the out text should never show jail cell is open we should just be able to close it however if it isn't open then this is where we check the unlocked status of it so i'll drag off of my jail cell again and say is unlocked and connect it to here i will paste the return node in and connect it like so so if it's unlocked it should just let you unlock it however if it's unlocked false then we're in the error out text we can type jail door is locked like so and now that we've done the can interact the next function i want to do is the on interact which is actually interacting with it so i'm going to again come and get my owner like so and this is where we run similar logic to what we've done here i'm going to copy these open in the branch like so on interact so this is where we're going to run very similar logic to the can interact so i'm just first going to create a new function just to make it a bit neater called interact and i'll just add this to the event graph so it instantly calls it like so we don't need to pass it anything inside this interact i'm actually going to copy all of the code nearly except the return nodes into the interact here i'm going to promote the jail say to a local variable like so and then we're going to say is if it's open true then we know we need to simply call close door because you can close the jail cell door if it's locked because you can't lock it open again if you've got a broken functionality you can add it here however if it's not open it means it's closed so we need to check if it's 
unlocked like we have here and we can add a branch to this if it's unlocked true then it means we can simply call open door so we can drag off and call open door and then if it's false meaning we can't unlock it then we're just not going to do anything because it's locked you can't do anything to it. And I'm going to hit compile and save and now with that basic setup I can come back to my BP jail and again if you've got your own interaction add to it but for me all I need to do is add the interactable jail door here and then I can click on it and I can set some default settings so the interactable name I will say the jail door and we'll hit compile and save and with that we should in theory be able to interact with the jail so let's go and have a look at it so if we walk up to it and it's locked in my case it will say door is locked you can't do anything but then if we untick the is unlocked we then should be able to open and close the door freely so you can see door is locked there's nothing we can do I press f8 and come and select all the jails and we'll just unlock every single one why not and we go back into it you can see we can now open the door and close the door that one glitches out through the door but you can see we can open every single door how cool is that ladies and gentlemen our jails are really coming along but what if we now put the player in jail entry so if we press p to teleport to jail oh no we've been arrested we're in jail there's nothing we can do however the escape technique says the jail we're in is open so we can click interact and we can escape jail how cool is that ladies and gentlemen we can turn back to third person we can't unlock any other jail but this one is unlocked because of the guard who forgot to lock it there we go ladies and gentlemen there is our first escape technique how cool is that so we now have a system where we can be taken to jail and we have an escape technique there we go we can now escape from jail and go to freedom how cool is that ladies and gentlemen it very well may be that you might have a story mission like on far cry 4 where you physically can't escape the jail there's no way to do it but that one when you send the character to jail just don't apply the jail effect so on the player here we add an escape technique just don't add one and then you've got a fixed jail where the player can never ever get out just be careful with it because otherwise you could glitch the game and never be able to get out which won't be good so in the next few tutorials we're going to look at adding more escape techniques and we'll do some more advanced ones like we'll take a look at the patrolling guard that i've done in a previous tutorial where we can make him patrol around and then we'll spawn a key on him we can make it so he can talk to a guard and say hey let me out i'll give you some money and he'll let you out we could add trap doors we can even lockpick when we add a lockpicking system thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if there are any issues please let me know below my name is decryption and i will see you next time